going? Welcome back to Nolan. We're jumping back into No Man's Skies. This is going to be part two of our starting off. We just went over starting off planet side, and now we're going to go over starting off in space. So I would recommend if you just popped into this video and you haven't seen the first one, I'm going to have it in the upper right hand corner here, but I would recommend seeing that because some stuff may not make sense in this one, but you don't really have to. I'm going to have, I'm going to try and have some time charts down at the bottom too for certain things. So if you're looking for a more important, uh, if you're looking for a singular issue, or a singular thing you want to do, use that there. Ran around, we found a bunch of resources. We explained what to grab from small buildings. Uh, we're going to be using these quite a bit. These are going to be a very important piece when we're starting off in space. We're also going to get over some tips and tricks on what you need to do up there. Especially if you're starting off, there's plenty of ways to make money in this game without having to work too hard for it, really, which is kind of nice. And as you can see here, we have a decent amount of resources. I do think I want to get more, but that's okay. This should be good enough to start. So first off, we're going to head to the space, and we're going to show off some tricks that, where you can actually make some money. Uh, one thing I recommend doing is shooting asteroids. Asteroids is a really good way to make money early on, especially if you're like, maybe you're not. I have 50 grand right now, which is not bad. But if you want to make a little more, if you want to make an easy 100 grand, it might be a good way to go if you're looking for something special. So... Let's hop in the ship and let's fly up to space. All right, now that we are in space, what I want to first do is I want to look for an asteroid belt or just a big field of asteroids, which we've got a couple in front of us here. I mean, it looks like we got a couple below. It's actually a pretty decent sized one. So just a quick example of what you can do and how you take these out. Let me fly over this one here. So what you can do, as long as you have your guns out, you can actually engage this asteroid. And as I get closer, we will end up getting resources. You're going to have different asteroids that are going to be like this, where you have to actually shoot all different areas of it. Obviously, you want to make sure that you're, you don't overheat your guns. As you see, there's asteroids giving me silver, which is actually really good. You don't really need silver early on, so it's a good item to sell. So we're just going to go through and cut through this real quick. Oh, I actually shot a ship, so we're in a, in a fight. Okay, well, we're gonna have to fight somebody now, which is not what I wanted to do, but I am a pirate in this one, so that's okay for me. That actually looks like a solar ship, too. I also want to show off something when you're in a dogfight in space. And when you're in a dogfight in space, oh, sorry, I'd like mess that one up. When you're a dogfight, there's some cool things that you can actually do option-wise that'll make it a lot easier for yourself to actually engage targets. So let me show that real quick. Uh, I'm going to go to Escape. I'm going to go over to, I believe it's Controls. Uh, if you're on PC, I do recommend doing Locked for your ship control style. It just feels more cleaner in a sense, for me at least. Uh, I obviously try if you want to. Another thing I want you to look at trying too is, or I shouldn't say want you to. Something I also recommend doing is I would use toggle on this. This is super nice. Unless you're someone who wants to challenge yourself, that's totally okay. If you enable toggle, what will happen? And you kind of just notice in that fight there. For me, if I press E, I will lock on to that target and my ship will continuously follow them. So allow me to gauge them a little quicker. It makes the dogfights a little easier because uh, ships in this game do move extremely fast so it is kind of hard to use the normal controls if you want to make it a little more challenging you could turn it off or you just have to follow them yourself again it's gonna make it a lot more harder because ships do fly pretty fast and i will say dog fighting without the auto is kind of hard in this game you could also do the hold which would be a little less uh, obviously on toggle it's pretty easy to stay on track hold would be good too if you want to have an extra little more interactive i would recommend doing that as well but i like using toggle it makes it way easier to take fights and as you saw, I didn't mean to shoot that person. I was just shooting an asteroid and a stray beam hit him. So that was kind of a, an issue there. But that is a control I want to recommend to people because it's very strong. I, I can't tell you. It's it's like a night and day situation for me. It makes it way easier and way more enjoyable for me to engage. I come from Aerospace 2, which is more of a freelancer game where it's very tight in combat and space. So coming to No Man's Skies, which is not so much strictly about combat in space. It's more about exploration building and all that other stuff their systems they have in place aren't really super tight like it is in everspace too so that's why i like using the toggle it makes it a little easier and it's pretty fun too as you saw there too we just got a bunch of dirt uh when you take out enemy ships you will get random items so that dirt's worth twenty four thousand, which is pretty good uh and you could just grab stuff for them it's pretty neat so back to what we were talking about after i had that little issue there shooting somebody 
Uh, we're going to want to try and find an asteroid belt, which right now there's not many, um, which is kind of a bummer, but that's okay. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly over here and take out this one too. Again, I'm watching my overheat. I don't want to overheat the guns too quickly. You will suffer a major time negative if you do let it overheat. I normally I have just basic guns. You can get rockets and other stuff to make this a little easier. There's also phase lead beams or phase beams. Those are really good for mining as well. Uh, one thing I haven't seen yet, and I don't know if we ever will, uh, there is no upgrades to mining in space that I know of at least. Uh, if you do know of any, please let me know in the comments below because I would love to find that out. Uh, so let's grab most of it there, so it's pretty good. All right, so let's check real quick. As you see here, we have, <laughs> buddy, we have 69 silver, oh, it's worth 12 grand. So it's not super expensive, but again, if you're starting off, that's a pretty good haul to have. So let's head on over. We're gonna go over to the space station. And I'm not gonna go straight to it. I want to get close, because I want to see if I can run into a asteroid belt. Oh, no one. We might have one right there. No, it doesn't look like it. That's okay. Again, just to make sure it's clear, um, what I'm trying to look for right now is a bunch of asteroids next to each other. This will allow me to go mining like crazy. Uh, and sadly, there's not a lot in this space, which is not a big deal, uh, but it's something I want to try and find. So let's keep going. Sadly, we're not really finding any major asteroid areas, which is kind of a bummer, but it's all good. We'll, we'll be coming back out to space anyway, so hopefully we can find some then. But, oh, here we go. Perfect. Oh, let's go. Okay, so this is exactly what you want to look for. This is what I'm going to call an asteroid belt. Uh, all these different asteroids will give you different materials. Uh, there is material here that you need to actually charge up your pulse engine, or sorry, your, um, yeah, no, it's pulse engine. Yes, it's your pulse engine. So get this tritinium you want to take out oh what the heck whoops uh, another thing too you will hurt yourself if you hit asteroids so be careful as you can see here my pulse engine requires tritinium that you get from asteroids so you want to definitely shoot those as much as you can as you can see there's different all different types of asteroids like that looks really cool Let's go get these. so i got gold nugget that's a really good one to have might as well scan that planet too nice that's good so we're just going to go through here, we're just take out some uh, asteroids. I am in first person right now. Kind of show off. I will say these asteroids look freaking awesome. <laughs> but I do want to show them off a little bit. It's pretty cool. Okay, so this is interesting. I think we're about to be in a fight. Oh no. Hello, friend. Alright, we're actually going to go do something. We're going to get a little off topic here. We're about to make a lot of money. <laughs> so, as you just see, uh, we just had a Henry Pirate, Dread Pirate Tuck. I don't know how to pronounce that name. You see this little pirate or uh, skull emblem? I'm going to go fight this person. There he is. Okay, cool. So, when you're in space, sometimes you'll run into these instant uh, situations or events where you actually can engage a pirate and you will get a bounty for it. Uh, I am a pirate myself, so I'm going to take it because I want money anyways, and this is a great way to make money really easily. Notably, you want to be careful because these guys can be strong. We've already got some good hits on them. Oh, uh, we actually, this is a fight to win. So we just made 164,000. We got a pirate transmitter. We got another good thing too I want to talk about as well. So we got 156,000. So that's good. So that will happen sometimes when you're mining or just in general. You'll be flying around in space and you'll have an alert pop up and you'll be able to take out pirates uh, for a bounty, which is a great way to make money. So we're going to head over to the space station. Uh, again, we will talk about the mining asteroids and going to asteroid belts. We got a little distracted by that pirate, but we also have some decent money now, which is awesome. Uh, this is something I want to talk about as well. When you take out other ships, sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll get something like this. You'll get a lot of these from pirates. Uh, what you want to do is you want to open it. Okay, so that's actually really cool. Those items will give you something random. It could be an upgrade for your ship. It could be a random item, which is actually a really good item. It's worth 69,000, just under 70,000, which is awesome. 
And as we were talking about before, when you're taking out asteroids, you can find gold nuggets, you can find gold. Gold sells for quite a bit. Uh, obviously, gold nuggets sell for even more. You can't analyze these, but I recommend selling them, especially early on. Uh, you can also find hyper crystals, which are good too. You can, again, you can't analyze it, and you'll get tritanium. Or you could sell them for a decent amount of money. But that is another great way to make money, is by taking out asteroids like we have been doing here. I'll take this one out here. Got some Tritanium, that's good. Definitely look out for those, that's a great way to make money. Again, we'll talk about it more in the future here, uh, in a little bit. Uh, we're just gonna fly over to the space station and talk about the next thing I do to make a lot of money. All right, so we're in the space station now. Uh, and one thing I want to go over is I want to talk about the navigational data that we have. This is going to be very important. Uh, this is one way I make a lot of money when I'm first starting off. Other than doing random stuff like mining asteroids and stuff, there's another way to make a decent amount of money and get some good upgrades too. So when you first land in, wherever you may land, you want to go to the right here. You see this little light bulb here, I call it. You've got your market in the middle here, you've got a teleporter here, and you want to go to the right. You want to look for this little emblem here. This is a cartographer. This is going to be a very important character for my the way I actually make money in this game. So you can get a bunch of charts from him. And as you can see here, I could purchase a random map for 15 nanites, or I can exchange Pacific part charts. And what that requires is our Navigational data as you see here. So exchange one chart exchange navigational data for new charts So the chart I go for Is going to be emergency cartographer data now as you can see here a map of the nearby planet with the coordinates of a distress signal have been marked So I have 11 of these. I'm gonna buy six Okay. Now if I go to my inventory see here I have six of these these can give you abandoned buildings they can give you manufacturing buildings they can give you distress signals which is actually be a ship that is either damaged and a entity needs your help or it's going to be a ship that you can claim for free this is a really cool way to find some cool ships early on notably they will be broken so you have to fix them and you won't be able to get all the slots that you would normally have you have to build up to them so I'm gonna hold E here and we're gonna go check it all out see what we get so this is perfect. We got a distress signal right off the bat. That's really good. That can be either a another entity who needs help with their ship, or it's going to be a free ship for us to take. So this is a very okay, perfect. This is right here. Intercepted starship distress signal, abandoned starship. Okay, well, this is good. So that distress signal we got is actually an abandoned starship. So this is perfect. This is what we want. These are going to be great ways to make money. It does take a little bit of process. That is why we actually mined all this stuff. And we're going to need to get more uh, ferrite dust, but we do have some metal, so we can actually refine that and get some more ferrite dust. I'm actually going to do this more times well. Okay, got a abandoned building. Let's do it one more time. You will have this thing pop up. Just keep trying. It'll be all right. It will work eventually. There we go. So now we have a secondary distress signal. So we got one, two, which is good. I'm going to do the next three. Again, just keep doing this until it lets you do it. There we go. Observatories are another great thing too. They will have a puzzle you need to solve and then that will give you a random location to look for something. Raider crash, okay, cool. We're gonna save that last one for now. So now my next steps, I'm gonna head down to this one here. I wanna get this one first. So before we do that, I want to buy a couple things just to get ourselves in a good position. I want to come to the market. And I want to look for... Actually, we'll buy ferrite dust. We'll buy that. I also want to get some metal plating. I'm going to get two of them. Actually, let me get four. Metal plating is going to be a crucial part to actually fixing these ships. And it's also going to be a good part to actually get fuel for your ships to take off. We're also going to grab two of these. These are going to be needed to actually fix certain items so if you have some extra cash like we got lucky with that pirate i could actually go ahead and buy two of these they're not that hard to make either 
Uh, you can make this from scratch if you need to. I'm just taking, I, we have a great opportunity here, so I'm going to take that opportunity. I'm just going to buy one of these because I actually need it. Uh, let's see, we're also going to sell a couple things as well. What we had on now. So you can sell the pirate transmitter, or transponder, sorry. Uh, which, but I also want to show you, you can sell it for 80 grand, which I'm probably going to do, but I want to show you another way you can use this as well. So if you have a pirate transponder, you can actually come over, you go, so this is going to be, if you're coming from the bay over here, again, you want to look at this straight on, so you have your portal to the right here, you have your market to the left, you have another a quest guy here, and you have a cartographer. If you go past the cartographer and go towards those stairs in the back, which is the right side of the player customization, you're going to go up these stairs, and you're going to see a person sitting in a chair up here. Look for this big sign here. It looks like almost like a uh, kind of looks like a Bitcoin, honestly. And up here, you want to talk to him. These are going to be a faction or a guild faction person. So what you can do is if you actually donate stuff to them, they will actually give you standing, which then you can use to buy certain things that you see here. These guys just don't have the pirate transponder, which is fine. This may be the so there are three different guilds in this area. Uh, there's merchants or sorry, there's merchants, mercenaries, and explorers. Each of these will have different things. If you, I'm not sure which one this is. Does it say anywhere? Let's see here, real quick. Okay, this is the Merchant Guild. Okay, cool, perfect, perfect. Each star, a space station will have a different guild there. This is the Merchant, so they're gonna be more based around the salvage data and like other items like that, which is all good stuff. We can obviously get eventually. We can make living glass. We can give them superconducting fiber somehow. All this different stuff. And you can redeem that for certain items here, which is actually these have this is a pretty nice one here. Suspicious packet. That's really good. So once you level up in these guilds, you can actually start trading with them like that. And as you saw here, we have the merchant's guild. You have the Mercenaries Guild and the Explorers Guild. You also have Outlaws too, which we are going to be going into the Outlaw Guild, technically speaking, as we start doing more piratey stuff. We're not really doing that right now. We're trying to set up for the future. So now we have all this stuff here. So currently, if I go to a Mercenaries Guild, I can give them that Pirate Transponder, and they will actually give me standing, and then I can use that to buy whatever items first in the list. So that's a super cool thing this game has nowadays, so it actually gives you more of a reason. Another thing you do too as well when we're here, if you, again, we're gonna just look at this on the front here. Uh, market, portal, cartographer. This guy here, it has like the little, almost like notepad stuff. Come talk to him. He's gonna give you missions that you can do if you want. You don't have to do these if you don't want to, but so again, you could do hunt low level pirates, kill four sentinels, kill 15 creatures, kill 11 creatures, raid a planetary depot. So they give you all these cool things. You can actually do these missions. They will give you money. They'll give you upgrades. They'll give you all these different stuff. There's no money here. Repair kits are really good. Uh, I'm not going to take on any pirates right now, though, because I have other things I want to do. But this is a great way to make money early on and also gain gain some guild and also gain some standing with these certain groups here so as you can see here we have the geck standing we have merch standing we have explorer standing we have mercenary standing uh, and then mercenary standing again so very cool thing i would recommend doing this too if you're looking for a certain item or if you want to get an exo upgrade you can do that too this is a great way to do it so our next step is we're going to head down to the planet there and we're going to take out i believe it's going to be we have two here Increase flat. This is the other thing you want to look out for. Make sure you look for a distress beacon, not crash freighter. Freighter. Definitely, this is good too. I recommend going to this right away. But we're gonna head this one up first, and then we'll head to that. So let me. We're gonna hop on our ship, and we'll fly out, and we'll check it out. We're gonna head down to the planet side, and we're gonna go get that ship. Let's head on out. Once you're out of the space station, you want to just boost over here. I actually am going to scan this planet to see what this has going on. I'm going to try and line up right with that, and I'm going to use my pulse engine in. That's going to cut the time in half pretty much, which is going to be great. As you see here, you're going to fly into orbit now. To let you know, this is a moon planet. So as we get down to here, I'm hoping it will be actually a broken ship. Land real quick. 
This place looks really cool. Alright. Oh, this place is really neat. Sorry, I'm distracted right now, but... Look at these plants or whatever. Looks so freaking cool. As you can see here, we are now at the Distress Beacon. We're gonna head over to that little thing there. This should give us a random item. Uh, whatever we want to pick. I'm just gonna scheme through this. So it says here, inspect recently installed ship tech, search for cargo. Now, what you can do here is you can do search for cargo and you'll get random items, which isn't bad. Or you can inspect recently installed ship tech, which can be, if you do this one, you may have a chance to get an actual upgrade for your starship. So I'm gonna do that. Let's see what we get. Perfect. And a blueprint now construct myself. Cool. So we just got a teleporter receiver, so I got an actual blueprint for that. So that's that's pretty cool. So that is actually, so I apologize. If you see that one, the first option is going to be it'll scan what that they have on there, and then that'll give you that'll unlock that upgrade that you can put on your starship too. So for instance, we just got head over to my starship here. We just got this teleporter receiver device that modulates standard Starship communication signals to enable the transport of matter as well as data. Starships fitted with such device can send, re send and receive products for substance to the user exosuit over a long distance. So this could be really good if you're actually trying to, if you're doing a lot of mining on planet side, you can have this on your ship and you have a longer distance at which you can actually put items in there, which is actually really good. So we do want to put that in there eventually because we will be doing some priority stuff planet side and I may not want to have my ship near me when I do that. So that's going to be good. We're not, we're, that, we're not going to worry about that for now, but that's a cool thing there. Back to the distress beacon here. If you actually saw, if you click the secondary system or secondary option, that will give you a random item. That could be an upgrade. That could be some nice material it could just be some basic material that you need to make stuff but i recommend doing that I, well, I might, whatever you want to do if you want more blueprints i would do the first one if you want an actual physical item do the second one so next up you want to walk over you want to hold e on the ship what's going to happen it's going to pop up to a okay a little system here it says compare this will compare both my ship and the new ship here this ship is bigger uh and technically speaking if this was actually fully upgraded, which we probably could do later on, I could get 11 million for it, which is actually a lot of money, but I don't have the resources that they need here. So what you're going to want to do is you want to claim ship. Okay. And then what I can do is I can hop in here now. This is my ship now. And as you see here, we need pure ferrite. I go over here. You can go ahead and repair all this stuff, but again, Early on, I recommend not doing this. It's not really worth it because you don't have the option to get all the stuff. You can if you want to, but I recommend like active activated copper. You have to go to different systems. I actually get that sometimes. You could get lucky in the system you have now may have that. That's great, but just a lot of work. And for early on, I just want to make some quick money. So I'm not too worried about it. If you see something like this, I would recommend trying to repair it. Uh, this is an A-class shield, so it would give me plus 15%, which me trying to go for a pirate playthrough here, I may want to do that. So what I need to do is get some copper and get some chromatic metal, but we'll see. We'll see. So when you're in this screen, as you saw here, we talked about this before. When I was up in the space station, I bought hermetic steel, a hermetic seal, and I bought metal plating. That's going to be what you need to fix pulse engine. So I want to pair those. And as you saw before, our launch thrusters need to be fixed as well we do have dihydrogen jelly so that's where the dihydrogen comes into play and now we need pure ferrite so the way to get pure ferrite let's hop out of here is you want to hit z on your keyboard and you want to pull out this and all you're going to do it's going to go into the actual Order refiner, you want to click and you want to put in your carbon for fuel. And then you want to grab some fire ferrite dust. And I'm actually going to let this run for a little bit because I actually need like two at least. Or I should say I need 60, I think it is. But I think I'm going to let it go to 100. And then I should be good to go for the next ship as well. There we 
go. So we can stop it now. Pull that back. There we go. And again, when you pull this up, it'll give you your actual carbon back. I just realized if you, I would recommend putting more. When you put that down, put the carbon in instead. Don't put the condensed carbon in. It doesn't really matter, but you may want to use this for something else. It'll have more power in general. So I would recommend putting this in. It's less powerful. It looks like when you do that, it actually refines it already. So so to keep in mind there. All right. And so now we have the pure fire right. I can open up the map here. Or sorry, open up the inventory. And now I have enough to actually fix this. And this is all you need to do. Uh, notably, you could fix the shield, but I don't recommend doing that. Uh, all I recommend doing is not getting hit by anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of here. Now this ship is mine, and it actually has... Let's see, does it have a fuel in here? Hold on, let me make sure. It does. Make sure your launch thrusters are fully fueled. Because uh, what you can do is if you hit your little quick menu here, which is for me, it's X. I can actually summon my vehicle to me. So you got this vehicle here. I can summon that whenever I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this stay here. I'm going to get back in my normal ship. We're going to fly up to the other distress beacon, and I'm going to grab that other ship as well. And then what I could do is when I go back up to the space station, I could summon those vehicles to the space station and scrap them out right in a row, which would be a lot quicker and way better for us. Let's fly back up. And now we want to go over to the next distress signal, which is on a different planet, it looks like. There we go. We're going to head straight that way. All right, so we're heading to our second distress beacon. And I really hope this is actually an abandoned ship and not just me trying to help somebody, but we will find out in a moment here. This planet also looks really cool. Oh, look at these plants. Oh my god. All right, let's... Oh, dang. Okay, so this is another situation to run into. Sometimes these distress, sig distress signals will not be what they are. So, for instance, this guy wants help. So, I'm going to go... I'm actually click this first. Might as well do this. Get some free stuff from that. Uh, you're going to run these. You want to talk to the actual pilot. And generally, they'll ask you, can you help me with this? I will offer my assistance. I'm going to go pop over here. It's going to give you kind of an idea. So I don't have... Let's see. So the glance at the ship's battery components is really in the ship. Has been poorly maintained. The various, the various subsystems simply wearing out to the point of failure. Some parts look more than a decade old. So it looks like... I can either do ferrite dust or I can do a microchip, a microprocessor. I don't have a microprocessor. So I'm going to actually do this real quick. We're going to pull out our refiner again. Carbon in there. Little extra here. I'm going to do another 100 just so I have extra. Stop processing. Grab that, put it in there. Grab that, put it in there. And we're going to grab this back. We're here. We will do that. Alright, so I believe we actually just completed that mission. Let's find the person now. Okay, he's happy that we helped him. Made sure well. Alright, so we got some nannies for that. Uh, not exactly what you want. That's kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. That is the thing that happens when you're actually running these missions. The distress beacons, sometimes they will be... Let's hop back in here. Sometimes they won't work out, which is totally fine. Uh, but it can be kind of a bummer, so don't beat yourself up too much if that happens. Uh, I am going to scan around, though, because I want to see if there's any buildings nearby. There is not. So 
So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna plot another route and see if we get a stress signal maybe. Okay, good. Let's go see. I wish I read that. I didn't. Abandoned starship. Perfect. Another one. Nice. So, let's fly over to that other distress signal. This is exactly what we want. So, we're going to fly up into space. Uh, another thing to know, before I do that, if you see how this is about 5 minutes and 50 seconds away, if you want to decrease that time by a major point, fly out into space. And what will happen, it will cut the time in half. Actually, probably more than half. It's going to cut it heavily. So I'm in space now. I can go use my pulse engine. This will cut it down to, yeah, I'm going to get there almost instantaneously. I recommend doing that. If you see something like 10 minutes away, it's not really. Just fly to space and you'll be able to cut, cut it completely in like, if not half, probably like 75 to 90%. So definitely keep that in mind when you're flying around here. So let's head down here. Land. Same, same deal, you want to go to the stress beacon. So we're gonna attempt to open the cargo hold. Okay, we got an uh, economy scanner, that's actually really good. So again, not really, I got another upgrade for our starship, which again, is not a bad thing. It's actually really good. Uh, this is great if you want to find out what's selling a lot. So this is great if you are going the route of a trader. You can do that. You can do anything you want in this game, really. If you're doing something where you want to trade a bunch of stuff, which I like doing, it's a lot of fun to make a lot of money. This is going to be a great option to have on your ship. Whenever you fly to a new planet, it'll actually tell you, or sorry, when you fly to a new galaxy, it'll tell you what the economy is there. And I think it may give you some more detailed information on what's selling well there, what's not selling well. It's a very nice thing to have uh, and very helpful. I can use it as a pirate too because I want to be able to sell stuff for a good amount of money to keep making money. So I'm going to definitely use that eventually when I have a better ship. Not a cool thing there. So next up, same deals before. I'm actually we're going to go over here. Scan this. It's actually kind of a cool looking explorer. It's a B class, which is awesome. Let's go ahead and compare. I'm going to claim ship and hop in here. Then we know that these are damaged. We have the proper items. We have Hermetic Seal. We have the plating. We also have the Pure Ferrite. And if you need Dihydrogen Jelly, all you need to do is go into one of these empty boxes and click Craft Products. Scroll down and you will see Dihydrogen Jelly. This will require Dihydrogen. What I would recommend if you want to save some uh, resource is put a refiner down. And what you're gonna do is gonna make sure you put carbon in here. You're gonna grab your dihydrogen itself and you're gonna place it in here. And that's gonna give you the option to make jelly. So I'm just gonna make, let's see, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna make a, oh, hold on. Oops, there we go. So I only need one, perfect. This does take a little longer. See, there is going to be a time constraint, but if you're trying to save some dehydrogen, I'd recommend going this way. I mean, really, it's one minute. It's not that long. So while we wait for that, we're going to go check out this damage machinery. I guess more nanites. I'm also going to scan these as well. The refiner's still going. I kind of hear it in the background. Some more nanites, we can scan these as well. Go ahead and scan that as well. Alright, let's head over here. Another 18 seconds, so it's almost done. And when we're doing that, I'm actually gonna scan some more. What is that? Oh, no. And building. Oh! We got a band of building over there, another band. Okay, we got a lot of buildings over there, so that could be good. Grab this, boom, boom. Should be able to grab all this stuff. All right. 
Okay, we got it back. Perfect. So, now that we did that, I can go back up here. I have my dihydrogen and jelly. This thing is fully repaired now. And again, it's got full fuel, right? Yep, perfect. So, I'm going to head back to my ship. And we're going to head up to the space station. I actually... Before I do that, I want to mark this area. This planet actually has quite a few buildings that I could go get some more navigational data, which we really want. So let's fly up here into space. I'm also going to that what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly straight back to the space station and we will show you how to sell those ships we just received for free. Alright, so we made the space station. We're going to fly in and we're going to salvage those ships we got. So what you're going to want to do once you're back in the space station, you want to use your quick menu. You want to go to summon vehicles and you want to go over to switch dock to ship. Uh, pick which one you want to do. I'm going to do the end of truth, which is the shuttle. And what you're going to want to do is you want to go to the left of the main center there. And you're going to see a computer back there. As you see back there, you see a little starship. Go straight to that console. This console is where you can actually upgrade your starship. You can learn about where to find upgrades. You also can begin salvaged analysts, which is what we're going to do here. Now, you want to be very careful when you do this. Do the first option if you're trying to make money. If you are later in the game and you want to start making your own starship, you can go ahead and extract custom modules. The custom modules will be your wings, your cockpit, and your engines. Again, I'm here to make money, so we're going to uh, claim scrap, which is worth 2.7 mil. Big for us, we're gonna claim it. As here in the upper right, we just got a bunch of items in our inventory. We also got some upgrades for our own ship, which is awesome. And as you see here, we have scrap items, which you can see here they sell for half a mil, 1.8 mil, 348,000. You also will get upgrades for your starship, which is great. Uh, we are right now... It's our own starship. What I'm going to do here, I'm actually send these over to my starship. That'll keep there. I'll keep that there, too. Actually, I'm going to send these up there, because I don't need this on me right now. All right. One thing to know is when you go to scrap out of a starship, make sure you are you have enough space in your inventory to actually do that. If you don't have enough space in your inventory, you won't be able to scrap out the ship. So just keep that in mind when you're doing that. Just be pre proactive and just clear your space if you can. For instance, I'm going to actually put a couple more things in my starship. And again, make sure this is a very, very important thing. If you're going to scrap out a starship, do not have anything in its cargo hold. If you scrap it out, you will lose whatever items are in there, which can be a major bummer if you have expensive products in there or upgrade stuff like that. So please make sure when you scrap these ships out, do not have anything in the cargo ship, in the cargo bay. It's going to be kind of a bummer if you do. I've done it before. It's not fun. All right. So now that we did that, I'm actually going to hit X again. I'm going to summon my other vehicle, which is the B-Class Explorer. The same deal. Come over to the Starship Outfitting. I'm going to go down to Begin Salvage Analysts. Again, two options. Do the first one. I'm going to claim scrap. Then get deployed. And now I will get a bunch of random items. And sometimes I will get some upgrades, which looks like we got some B-class upgrades, which is awesome. I'd love to see that. Oh, we also... That's the other thing, too. When you scrap out ships, you will get storage augmentations, which is pretty much allowing you to increase your inventory space and or your module space. So if I go over to... Actually, let's send this over there first. If I go over here, what I can do is I can, if I wanted to, I come back to this. And what you want to do is go to Upgrade Starship. 
And what you can do is you can purchase storage for 7 million, upgrade class for 10,000 nanites, apply augmentation. So if I want to, I can go ahead and increase certain space whenever I want to. If I want more storage, I can do it down here. Or if I want more space for my actual modules that I use to actually increase my ship's capabilities, I can do that as well. I don't want to do that right now because, again, I'm not going to have a ship for much longer. And now, once you've gone through all that stuff and you know you have your stuff in your inventory here, we're going to go sell all that stuff for a bunch of money. Head over to the market here. Go to sell. And you want to look for these recycles. You want to look for these items here. Just do a quick overview, make sure you got all of it sold. Looks like I do. And now look at that, we are at $4 million, which is awesome. We'd love to see it. While we're here as well, I want to go ahead and get more distress beacons. I've got five more navigational data. Chain Pacific Park charts, go down here. Buy all five, make sure it's a stress beacon. It is, good to go. And then you can go ahead and rinse and repeat this process. So I'm gonna do this one more time. Stress signal, awesome. Hopefully that's actually, let's see if this is the bottom here. It does not, that's a bummer, that's good. So we got another distress signal, abandoned starship, awesome. I can go ahead and claim that, scrap it out. This is a great way to make money and get upgrades. I recommend doing this for anybody, even if you're just, just in general starting off, I recommend doing this because it's going to make it really easy for you to go ahead and upgrade your ship. So for instance, uh, I don't really have space right now, but I should see if I do. Do I have enough space for all this stuff? I might. Oh, am I just going to run out? Okay, that's actually not a big deal. Let's see. To sell them. I'm going to show you something real quick as well. As you see, I just took all my inventory in my starship and put it into my actual person here, my exosuit. I'm just going to sell a couple items here real quick. On my exosuit, I'm going to sell the transponder. I'm also going to sell the... Right, so I can't sell the dirt, which is fine. Yeah, no dirt here. Sometimes items you have on you will not be able to be sold in this area. So just, just have to deal with it for now. So we have one slot left. Let's see here. Dirt, I mean, I'm kind of okay with leaving that. I do want to take this with me. The other thing too, you can, if you have upgrades like this, you can actually store them and put them back in. So again, now I kind of have no space, so now I have to kind of figure out what I want to do. So I think for now, we're going to... So that... So this is... Oh, so, so, so. Okay. I have more space. So now I can actually put all my stuff I want in there. One, well, done, cool. All right, so now see, I wanna go get this ship here. It's worth four mil, so it's very possible I can get this for free. So let me run over here. Pretty cool looking ship. I don't really like the engine, but that's okay. Let's give you more of an example. That's a solar ship, that's really cool. Let's talk to them first. Make an offer, oh. Let me actually, uh, if you ever see a ship that you want, so for instance, I see this ship came in, I can't afford that. It's like A class and it's a solar ship, so it's worth a lot more. It's worth 8.5. This guy here has a ship that is a C class. It's worth 4.5, uh, 4 mil. If I come talk to this pilot, it will give me options to offer to trade, make offer, make an offer on the life form ship, recruit life form uh, to squadron. I'm going to go ahead and do the make offer on their life form starship. And what I can do now, because I can exchange this, so I'm not going to do this right now because I don't really want to spend 650000 I'll be out of money. 
I can exchange this for 650,000. So that's just under a mil, and I can get a brand new ship for free. He also has a pretty nice shield on there. Uh, frankly, I'm not getting much of an upgrade, so I'm not gonna worry about that, but this is what you wanna do. Once you have enough money from doing the salvage data, you wanna go ahead and upgrade your starship to the, new, the one you want. Or if you want something like this, where you want a, a hauler, Again, this is a B class, it's worth 24 mil, so there's no way I can do this, but let me do this as an example. Same deal, come to the pilot, talk to them. Offer on their life form ship, negotiate, and yeah, again, obviously I don't have enough money for this, but an example you could do this whenever you want to. In certain systems, you will have some of the same ships come through. So if you're looking for something very if you haven't made your own ship yet, or you're looking for a cool ship that you kind of like how it looks, just come to space station and kind of pay attention to what flies in and out, and try and kind of find out what you really like and want to keep. Because generally, if I see a fighter ship that looks really cool and I really want it, I could actually go and use the navigational data I have and get a dis distress signal, and then that will sometimes give me a chance to get that type of ship. Because generally, the types of ship you see flying around this system will also be in the ground where they're actually broken. So definitely something big to think about as well. So overall, that is a great way to actually... That's a great way to build out your money early on. Uh, we're not even like I may be an hour into this game. Like my, my time right now, I think is an hour and 12 minutes maybe. Uh, you could do this almost instantaneously if you want to. So this is one thing I recommend doing. This will help you out a lot. And it's a great way to get to a certain point where you have enough money to buy a new ship that you want. And obviously a new ship is just going to give you more space. And sometimes it'll give you ability to have more modules you can actually keep using. So if you want to have if you have increased damage on your photocans, you could do that. If you want to have increased damage on your rocket launchers, you can do that. If you want to have your hyperdrive to be more efficient, you could do that as well. There's all sorts of things you can do once you have enough money in this game. And also it's a great way to start setting yourself up for success later on. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you enjoyed this too. Hopefully this is pretty understandable and hopefully it works out for you guys. Hope it works out. I'm gonna continue doing this. We'll be coming back to this pirate run here and I'm gonna talk more about what you do as a pirate in a sense. Uh, this is definitely my pirate run. Uh, it's a super fun way to play this game. Again, you don't have to play it this way. I'm playing like this because I want to, but super fun. I recommend trying it out when you get a chance. And use the strategy. Starting off in space, this is a great way to do it and easy way to make money and get some cool ships. So, hopefully that was uh, very informational and I hope you enjoyed and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.